morning, everyone. Hi, how are you all? Lovely. Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Damien. Welcome along to the Mulgrave Country Club. Welcome along to That's Good to Footy. Uh, live, uh, th That's Good Footy panel show. It's the only live and interactive footy panel show going around. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. Um, these are for the passionate supporters, which we think you guys are going to be tonight. This is where you'll get to see the players in a little bit of a different light. Who wants to meet them? Cool, cool. Let's get on with it then. Let's not muck around. Uh, please welcome to the show our first panellist. He was born on the 15th of March in 1996. He's played a total of 135 games and he's kicked 172 goals. He made his AFL debut in 2015. When he plays for the Collingwood Football Club, he wears the number two on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Jordan Ngoi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, very nice welcome. He's very happy. All the cameras are out and going, hey, quick, Jordy's here. Uh, mate, good to see you. It's so wonderful to have you back on the show again. It's good to be here. Thanks for coming, guys. We really appreciate it. Okay. There you go. Very nice. Very simple. Let's just get straight to the point. Let's get our second panellist out here. I know I'll be nervous out the back. Um, he was born on the 20th of September in 1996. He's played a total of 159 games and he's kicked 17 goals. He made his AFL debut also back in 2015. When he plays for the Collingwood Football Club, he wears the number 37 on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Braden Maynard. <laughs> everyone that was great very nice good welcome um brayden first time on the show welcome to that's good for footy and welcome to the mulgrave country club yes thanks for having me it's, uh, yeah, it's good fun i'm looking forward to it yeah yeah well we're going to get into it because we don't want to hold the boys up uh we've got a lot to get through tonight and i want to make it as quick and as brief as i possibly can whilst we still can enjoy their company and that's what it's all about let's get into it uh then there were six qualifying round uh was unbelievable what a round of football it was four of the best games of football you were probably ever ever likely to see uh it's now into semi-finals week four clubs will go head to head for the chance to play in a prelim Will it be the D's? Will it be the Lions? Will it be the Dockers? Or will it be the Mighty Pies? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Uh, the one thing I do know is the grand final is back where it belongs, the home of football, the Mighty MCG. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and didn't it come to life last weekend? How bloody good was that? Anyway, after two years of lockdowns, restrictions, isolation rules, mask-wearing mandates, rings of steel, border closures, booster shots and curfews, the day we all deserve is finally here. So let's not muck around. Let's get on with the show. Let's get into it. All right? Uh, let's do it in our first segment. It's called Who Are You? <laughs> Actually, I saw somewhere recently your um, favourite playing list. Your music's very diverse, very similar to mine, which I was yeah. very proud of. I can adapt to any situation I've put in, so if I were to go on music tonight, I'd be able to adapt and play some really uh, <laughs> awesome tunes for everyone, so cool. maybe, maybe that can uh, happen later on. That might be all right. I might open up the bar later, put a tab on it, and we'll get uh, Sam to... Um... <laughs> all right, I'll get, when it goes through some questions with you boys, uh, growing up as a kid, um, how often would you catch up with your friends after school and get down to the local park for a kick of the footy. How often would that happen for you when you were growing up? Uh, me personally, uh, I didn't play much footy on the side outside of school, I guess. Yeah. Um, the usual would be catch up near the fish and chip shop, get some large chips <laughs> and a 1.25 litre drink. So um, obviously things have changed a little bit since yeah. then, but uh, no, nah, I think I had enough footy going on at the time, which, you know, kept me busy. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I used to always go over kick the footy with my mates and even my family. I have a brother and also a sister and she used to get get involved and me and dad um, always just go down to the local park and have a kick and I'd always used to kick it as high as I could in the air and try mark it and would have all these competitions and goal kicking competitions so um, yeah I've always loved footy as a young kid and always loved going down to the park to have a bit of a kick and a run around. Brilliant I love that all right did you used to dominate at these catch-ups were you like the one that did get out of the way is that the 
Always, always. <laughs> we, had, we actually used to get like a little bit of a group of us, about 10 of us, and we used to play Jack in the Pack. And um, back then, I'm probably the size I am now. I was a big boy, uh, pretty fat, and I used to <laughs> just win every contest and try um, try have as much fun as I could. Beautiful. What, what about you? Obviously, I know you're doing your fish yeah, and chips. Yeah, I dominated but... the fish and chip shop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, similar to Braden, definitely yeah. kicked with the old man. Um, yeah. That was kind of our thing, yeah. but... Um, yeah, oh, the, as at school, definitely with mates. I think that's pretty much the only thing you yeah. did at recess yeah. and lunch, really. Yeah, I understand. Um, what was more important growing up, taking a specky over your mates or banging a ridiculous goal? Um, probably the specky part, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone enjoys getting one on top of their Mine mates. Mine was actually neither. Sorry to interrupt oh. there. Mine was actually laying big tackles and rubbing boys' heads in the ground. <laughs> So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I kind of saw days. that one coming. I, it was, I left it wide open there. What's the most important thing growing up? Um, well, well, from your point of view, who did you grow up barracking for? I barracked for the Tigers, so... Oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah, not great as a youngster, but yeah. uh, that quickly changed once I got drafted. Yeah. I've gone for quite a few teams. I've, um, I was actually going through some old photos the other day, um, going through them with mum and dad, and they were showing me, and I had bloody... Port Power Singleton, Adelaide Singleton, Carlton Singleton, and pretty much my dad worked at a few of the clubs and he ran for Carlton, so I've gone for Port, Adelaide, Adelaide, Carlton, but I finished on Melbourne um, in under-16s, but I just loved watching and um, playing footy. You uh, just have a real desire and a love for football itself. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. I'd yeah. watch any team, really. Yeah, brilliant. Going back to your first game, you've just been told you're playing this uh, this week. Who was the first person you told and what was their reaction? Can you remember that? Um, yeah, definitely. I think yeah. it was my old man. Uh, okay. At times. I think, yeah. I think, yeah, pretty, pretty sure. Um, yeah. I think he was almost more ecstatic than me. So, okay. obviously, they come along for the journey with you. So, yeah. that achievement for me was as much theirs as it was mine. So, it was yeah. good to enjoy it with them. He called his dad then the fish and chip shop. I, <laughs> <laughs> I won't be coming in. <laughs> That's so uh, cool. Yeah, mine, mine was the old man as well. Uh, he was the first person I called on the way home from footy and he was obviously very happy and I was, um, I was very stoked. Yeah, that, that emotion for you though, obviously, yes, you bring the, the most important person in your life. What was it like for you though when you first heard the news? Um, it was a little bit surreal, I guess, because yeah. once you get drafted, you're, you're almost back to the bottom again. You're going to yeah. earn your position in the team, you know, put your hand up for selection, everything like that. So yeah. Yeah. it all starts again, which is exciting, but kind of once you get picked and I guess that's when you know you're in the best 22, yeah. um, you know, it's kind of that next step up, which is, which is what you want. And then from then on, you just kind of keep progressing and wanting to get better. But Brilliant. to get that opportunity, that's probably the biggest crowd, you know, I would have ever played in front of as a junior. So yeah, yeah. Um, just that was exciting in itself. Excellent. Yeah, I was the same. I was, um, I was very happy. I had, I had a very uh, big smile on my face and I couldn't wipe it off for the whole week. But then... Kind of closer to the game, I started getting really nervous. Um, <laughs> and I've got a bit of a story that I can tell later, but uh, it's a bit of a funny one that, that yeah. uh, I tell at other sporties. So <laughs> well, um, I'll have to say that at some stage. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Um, what was the emotion like for, uh, for, you, for you when you're, you're first standing in the change rooms and you put the Collingwood jumper on? It's the black and white stripes. You know there's a lot of tradition at the club. You're not a supporter anymore. You're not a fan. You're actually going out and you're playing. What was that emotion like the first time? Yeah, it probably, probably didn't feel real, um, I would say, because, uh, you know, Collingwood's such a massive club. You've, yeah. you've, everyone knows the black and white stripes. So to be in that position was, was unbelievable. And it almost takes a few games just to kind of wrap your head around it that, you know, yeah. you are now a player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you yeah. can leave a legacy too. So it took me a while, but, um, you know, good, good group of guys around me yeah. makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. And Braid? Jordy had to put the jumper on then the green jacket on, didn't he? Because you were... <laughs> Because I yeah, think you're always oh, a sub, actually. There's a sub, so. Sub, yeah. It's funny. Thanks, um, thanks for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about the change rooms yeah. first, but yeah. Um, yeah, I was a bit, a bit like Geordie. I, I couldn't really believe what was happening. I, um, it didn't really feel real. And then, obviously, running out on the G in front of 80 odd thousand people um, with your brothers, it's, it's pretty cool and pretty surreal. Wow, I love that. Um, did you, you uh, uh, when you were growing up, did you guys used to collect footy cards? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Dad was a bit tight, so I'd only get one pack every now and then, right. which made it hard. But, yeah. um, you know, I made do with what I had, and, yeah. you know, you'd always look to try and get them signed and stuff like that. 
And yeah, I was similar. I used to collect all of them, um, yeah. trade them at school when I was in primary school and whatever. But um, yeah, I was, I was big into it. So carrying on from that emotion, you've collected footy cards. You used to look at your idols. What was it like when you first saw yours? Definitely weird. Yeah. Um, Braden actually said to me once, you know, he saw his footy card and he goes, geez, I'm good looking. I was like, oh, he's up. <laughs> He <laughs> just said that when he saw his print out <laughs> in the back too. I love it. Yeah. Up, yeah. Up, you know? yeah. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. Um, yeah. That's probably like another thing you want to tick off on the bucket list, yeah. you know, have your own footy card. For I've sure, heard mate. a lot of local footballers getting their own cards printed, so <laughs> at least we didn't have to go to that extent. <laughs> love it. Um, <laughs> hang on, I'm just I'm lost there. What was the question again? <laughs> He's got, he I caught like me it. off track here. We were talking about you being a rooster, but... Um, getting back to getting back to it was just the footy cards. You used to collect them, but what was it like for you when you first saw, saw yours? Um, well, my cousin actually was a big collector of them, and he actually showed me. And when I first saw it, um, I don't know, it was a bit of a weird feeling. I didn't know how to feel really because it's yeah. it's kind of you, like you want a footy card, and now kids that are young are collecting them and trading them and doing whatever they want with them. So yeah, um, yeah pretty pretty surreal. Pretty wow. amazing. Absolutely. Hey, does everyone in the family now barrack for who you play for? Or is it still... And I'm talking about maybe close relatives, distant relatives. Are they all on the same page or you got fence sitters? What's the go there? Yeah, all my family are pretty much Collingwood, yeah. Even yeah. if, like, we're playing their team, it's, you know, they, they would like their team to do well, but, you know, want our team to do better, I guess. Good. Yeah, Dad's still finding it pretty hard to barrack for Collingwood, even though he's been doing it for eight years. He, <laughs> he doesn't like to admit it, but um, I've converted most of my family. Yes. Uh, but I still feel like I'm trying to convert Dad fully over, but I feel like I've got him after this year. Nice. Excellent. Can you remember the first day turning up to the club for training? I know we alluded to this uh, just briefly. Uh, what were you thinking? Were you nervous? Were you anxious? Did you know where to park or sit? Did anyone yeah. play, play any pranks on you and tell you go and sit over? And I actually, um, I hate being late for things. I hate it. And I'll never forget we started at 8 o'clock and I got to the car park um, across the road from the club at 6am. So I'd actually, I'd gotten up at 5, done everything, gotten ready because I was so nervous and excited, barely slept. And I got to the car park across the road at 6am and literally that? sat there for two hours going... Fuck, where do I go? What am I doing? <laughs> I had no idea who to contact. But, um, yeah, that was my sort of first That's day. Brilliant. Doing it. Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, I was pretty nervous, I think. Uh, similar, Braden. I didn't, definitely didn't get there two hours before. That's a bit weird. <laughs> but um, we, we were lucky enough to play Vic Metro together. So I think yes. we almost messaged before and said, you know, meet us out the front of this door. And we walked in together. Um, Safety in numbers, brother. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. right. You feel a bit bigger like that. Yeah, I hear you. Um, what's been the biggest crowd that you've played in front of and how did that feel? This is for the first time. The biggest crowd you played in front of and what was it like the first time when you walked up the race and you saw that massive you know, crowd, stadium, people? Give us that emotion. Yeah. Your first um, time of doing it. Yeah, the first time living, living it and running out in front of a huge crowd was... Um, yeah, very nerve-wracking. I mean, you're going out there and you're, you're playing the game you love, but you do have to take a moment to when, when you do get out there, just have a look around and soak it all in because it is, it's not intimidating, um, but it is pretty full-on. But once you're out there and you get locked into the game, you kind of forget about it. But when it's games like Anzac Day, Grand Final Day, prelims, it's on a whole new level. Um, even on the weekend just gone, another weekend this weekend... Um, yeah, the Collingwood fans definitely come out and we're definitely built for it. We're, we're used to it, where some clubs, uh, maybe interstate, don't get as many people as we do. So we are used to it now and I, I absolutely love playing in front of huge crowds. Love it. That's brilliant. That's so cool. Excellent. I want to hear from you, Jordy. What was it like for you coming up? You see, yeah, exactly as I described, you've got a full stadium of people. You're walking up the race, goosebumps. Hairs on the back of your neck, what sort of... Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was people hanging over the race. I think, you know, yeah. in a lot of um, movies and stuff like that, you see, you know, them coming out of the yeah. tunnel and that's what happens. People yeah. yelling abuse, whatever it may be, over the race. Um, yeah. And for me, f coming up for the first time was like, oh, OK, this is, <laughs> this is what it's really like, you know. Yeah, right. you, you can feel the presence of the people. And then, like Braden said, we're lucky enough to play in front of thousands of people a lot yeah. of the time, so... Um, for me, personally, I, I love it. The bigger the crowd, the better. Um, it's just more of a, f a platform to, to show your ability on, yeah. I guess. Um, I love that. 
And that's, I think, you know, us Collingwood boys really thrive on that. That's brilliant. There are going to be questions that are going to be coming up later that are relating to what you've just said, so forgive me if I do go over them, but I'll, uh, I'll tweak them as we go. Um, was footy the only sport that you actually both thought, thought about playing? Because I've noticed you were quite proficient at a lot of different sports uh, in, your, in your journey. Yes, I enjoyed playing all sports. I, um, I liked the physicality of football and um, the other sports, I didn't really get that. So that's why I love playing footy the most. Like basketball, cricket and tennis were the other sports I played. But it used to frustrate the shit out of me because they were non-contact sports and I love <laughs> contact. So, um, yeah, football was definitely my number one and that's why I'm playing and I've chosen it. Can I ask you just before you answer, Jody, was there a, a moment where you ever had to think about which, which path you wanted to choose? Yeah, so I got to about under 16s and I was playing basketball and footy and... Um, basketball is very hard to get into um, and I kind of was playing some better football and um, my dad, we had a chat, I had a chat with my dad and he kind of said football is probably the right path to go down and I did enjoy football a lot more and I kind of started to play basketball just for a bit of fun so okay. um, yeah it was pr a pretty easy decision. Yeah. yeah, right. George? Yeah, as a kid I pretty much did every sport, tennis, basketball, yeah. Yeah. soccer, um, pretty much anything I could... Or well, mum and dad could enrol me in yeah. and send me off, uh, get me out of the house, that's what they'll do. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, I think it was great playing so many sports because yeah. you pick up little different bits and pieces. But um, unlike Braden, I was kind of only good at footy, so I guess it made the option pretty easy. <laughs> nice. If it was your choice and not the coaches, what position would you want to play? I'd love to play in the forward line, full forward. <laughs> yeah, plug a locket sort of thing, you know? <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, probably midfield, actually. Yeah. I wouldn't want to play as a defender. I'll leave Braden to, to yeah. do that. <laughs> well, it takes a certain skill and a certain quality, oh, they do all, They yeah. do all the hard work, mate. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so. yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, do you watch a lot of footy on TV, boys? And if you do, do you watch it with the sound up or down? And is it probably more now that, or less now than it used to be? Um, yeah, I really, to be honest, I don't really watch any footy. Um, oh, wow. I'm, like, just completely yep. off it. I think Braden's complete opposite. He loves footy. But um, yeah. in saying that, the way the games have been this year, like so close and, yeah. and stuff like that, even myself, I do find myself checking in yeah. and, you know, yeah. getting into the game a little bit, yeah. bit more, which has been good to see. And I think a lot of the fans have been like that too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I really enjoy watching footy. I, all, all types of games and or besides if it's two horrible teams playing. But, um, like, for example, last week I'd... I watched the Friday night game, Melbourne versus um, who was it? Melbourne versus Sydney, and Sydney, yeah. I watched it to the very end of the game, and I got into bed, and my heart was racing because wow. I get that that involved, and really, really enjoy watching it. That I actually get too emotionally involved, and yeah. I get into bed, my heart's racing, I can't sleep. So Same. the next night, when I had to just give it a break and not watch as much. So um, <laughs> oh, that was on the Thursday, right? And then yeah. Friday, I had to just chill out and not watch it because I couldn't sleep. So, wow. yeah, I do like watching the games. I do. That's funny how you say your heart racing. I'm sure every fan in the room, yeah, has, has been feeling that with uh, the way Collingwood have been playing this year. Unbelievable. Um, outside of AFL, is there another sport that you like to watch, that you like to really get engaged in outside of AFL? I don't mind watching a bit of NBA. Um, I love my table tennis, so every now and then I watch some table tennis. But um, Really? Uh, yeah, they're not as good as me, though, so it's, it's kind of boring. <laughs> nice um, answer. Probably golf. Okay. Uh, yeah, interesting one. I'm probably the least patient person going around, but yeah. lately I've been starting to play golf. and. Okay. Uh, yeah, I never thought I'd be saying it, but I've been watching a fair bit of golf lately. That's so interesting. Uh, wow. it's been interesting, yeah. Life has ch just... It just means I'm getting old, I think. Yeah. Just getting ready for retirement. While we're on the subject, very quickly, what do you think of the LIV uh, tournament with, you know, McElroy and everybody going? Do you think that's great for, for golf? I think so. I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's opening up another competition yeah. up. They get a lot of money, enjoy they? it. Yeah. Getting hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah. big time. It. I think they won... It was Stupid six, not to. Yeah. I wish we got that money. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think the winner got six million for uh, that little game the other day. Um, before a big game, do you like your own space? Are you nervous? Are you anxious? Are you talkative? Are you quiet? Um, or are you just like going through your own routine? What, um, describe what you do. Yeah, I'm pretty cruisy. I go up, uh, get a coffee, an acai bowl, and just kind of 
I don't know, lounge around, bum around, yeah. just keep checking the time, seeing if it's time to leave yet. Yeah. Um, so is that a bit of nervous anticipation for you? Or oh, you could say that. Oh, not too many nerves, but just, yeah. I don't know, boredom. I've got nothing to do, yeah. you know what I mean? So <laughs> Good. literally I'll just bounce around yeah. and then, you know, by the time I get up and do all that, it's pretty much time to go anyway. But Braden would be, he would do something silly. Yeah, I'm it? a bit superstitious, so. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Too I've too. got a I've got a routine out that I that I follow uh, every. Explain. Every, can you explain? Tell them the routine. Uh, well, all right. So I wake up, have about an eight nine hours sleep. Wake up, go get a coffee, <laughs> make some brekkie with my partner. What's for um, brekkie? Have I want toast with some eggs and um, might duck down to your fish and chip shop and grab a flake. <laughs> No, nah, but um, yeah, I won't go through it all because it takes a while, but I go into the club before we all walk over as a little group over to the MCG. We've been doing that for the last year or so, and yeah. um, that's really enjoyable and good fun for the boys. But um, yeah, as I said, I'm pretty superstitious, so I, start, I like to keep to a, to a routine. Yeah, cool. Okay. I do know there's people we've spoken to on the shows previously, and it's like, put, put your left sock on first and put, do up your right boot first with the laces. You know, really quirky kind of stuff. Hey, you've been handed a first-class ticket to go anywhere in the world. Where are you going and why? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I'd be giving it back. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, mate. Well done. Um, I'll take Geordie's tickets and I'll, <laughs> I'll take me and the boys probably to for, yeah, Europe somewhere. Yeah. Ibiza, Barcelona sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, good, Enjoy good. Myself. Excellent. Just send him photos, that'll do. That'll be all right. Um, who's been your biggest influence or support in your footy journey for you? Me personally, that's been my dad for sure, I think. Um, you know, every tryout, every training, he's always been there supporting me uh, and just always someone who wanted to get the best out of me. I think, you know, he pushed me uh, sometimes and, you know, we might have had fights here and there, but, you know, where it was coming from and I think that was the best part and that's why when I made it and, you know, got drafted, that's why it was so special to uh, enjoy it with him. Good. Excellent. Well yeah, probably my, probably my father in particular, uh, but my whole family have been huge over my sort of sporting journey. Um, I do look up to dad probably the most though, and I, I actually look up to every single one and um, every, everyone in my family, I, even my sister. Uh, but yeah, more importantly, my dad, like he's been by my side uh, for the whole footy journey when I was a junior. And yeah, yeah like Geordie said, he had a bit of tough love, you could call it, yeah. after some tack cup level games. He's had a decent crack at me for not giving it a giving a decent crack. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful and grateful to have him by my side. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing it. Love it. Good stuff. Hey, how are you with flying, boys? Do you need, like, um, do you request leg room? Do you wear headphones, take your own pillow? Um, got to have streaming service? What, like, what sort of a traveller are you? Um, with footy, we usually sit, we've sit, sat together for, what, five Six years. So, um, yeah, they usually just book us extra leg room, which is nice, and then Braden usually buys the lollies. So um, that's, about it. that's about it, really. I don't, I don't really like flying, I, and this bloke doesn't make it any better. He's, like, nudging me and pissing me off the whole bloody <laughs> flight. But, um, yeah, when there's turbulence, I get all sweaty palms and that. So I don't really like flying, yeah. and sitting next to him makes it a whole lot worse. So, yeah, right. Um, Let's get it over and done luck, with. Luckily, we do it only five times a year. Yeah. If, we, uh, if I played interstate and had to do it every second week, I probably actually wouldn't even want to play for him. So yeah, right. Very lucky. There you go. I'm glad, I'm glad you play a lot of for your football here then. Uh, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for him. Thank you. What we're going to do now, it is a footy panel show, so we're going to talk a little bit of football. Um, as I said, this is what we'll be doing in the first quarter here, so we're going to get into it. Boys are just going to give me a little bit of insight, we'll, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, semi-final number one, Friday, September the 9th, Brisbane versus Melbourne, 7.50pm at the MCG. Brisbane in the thriller over the Tigers by two points. 17 lead changes throughout that game. For Brisbane to win, uh, their forward line uh, had to be firing, and it was three goals apiece from Danaher, Hipwood and Cameron. Lockie Neal ended up with 39 quality possessions. Finals footy brings pressure and the uh, cream rises to the top. Melbourne went down to the Swans by 22. May was at his brilliant best. Things could have gone a lot worse um, if it had not been for him. Sydney exposed Melbourne's overuse of the ball and prevented them from getting a run on. Uh, the pressure Sydney applied to the ball carrier was intense. The end result from this pressure was Melbourne uh, turning the ball over and then Sydney's fast, quick ball movement back into the forward 50. That was the game changer. 
What do you think here, boys? Big game, 7.50 p.m. We are talking semi-finals, MCG, under the bright lights. Who do you um, think is going to win this one between Brisbane and Melbourne? I think, personally, I think Melbourne's going to bounce back. I don't know. Uh, in the past, Brisbane haven't gone too well coming to the MCG, especially finals time. So just on the back of Melbourne's history, I'll go with them. OK. Yeah, I'll tip Melbourne as well. I reckon um, Brisbane will give it a give it a nudge, but I feel like Melbourne will be too um, too experienced in in finals for at the G. Where do you think the strengths will be um, for Melbourne? Will it be their back line? Will it be their forward line? Will it be Brisbane's on ball use? Who, who do you think is going to be you know? How do you counteract it and balance it? Um, I think it's probably Melbourne's midfield. Um, yeah. They're so good, especially Petrarch. Is, if he's if he's on, you know that's half the game there. So. Uh, if him and Oliver can do well together, I think, you know, they might beat Neil in that regard, but Neil's so good, so tough battle there, so I feel like it's whoever kind of wins that mid-battle. Can I yeah. ask, you, just before you yeah. go on, with Christian, he's got um, a fracture of the tibula, right? Is that, will he, what will his mindset be like? You both had injuries, and you go in, you're obviously not 100%, what, what do you reckon will be going through his head? He seems like a pretty professional dude, so I feel like this week he'd be doing everything he actually can yeah. in terms of the recovery side of football, yeah. Yeah. Um, extra recovery, whatever that may look like. But um, even if they have to jab it up, I reckon he'll be fine. Just take the shit out of it. But from what I've from what from what I've heard, <laughs> Pendles described it on this podcast the other day or on the radio that because Pendles had the same injury and he said yeah, it feels right. like every time you take a step or if you run, it feels like someone's stabbing a knife in the back of your calf. So wow. it'll be interesting to see how much recovery he's actually done and how, yeah. how much tape he's going to have to use because it would, yeah, that seems That's like it hurt a lot. Yeah, right. Okay. How long have you been a physio for, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> yeah, heaps of credentials up here. Don't worry about that. Um, let's get to this one, boys. Saturday, September the 10th, semi-final number two. Collingwood versus Fremantle, 725 MCG. Fremantle came off uh, 41 points behind uh, to finish the Bulldogs season for 2022. There were some serious questions about the Dogs being able to run out games and keeping up the intensity, but that's something they can work on in the off-season. Pies in one of the best games in the modern era went down by six, but it was epic. Let's discuss that and the semi-final game in our next little segment, which is called Tell Me More. Braden wants to steal this for his set list. He really likes it. He thinks it's bloody good music. Um, so in, in the segment, Tell Me More, each week we ask the panellists to give their thoughts and opinions on all things in football happening in and around. We're not trying to make or break the news here. We're just trying to get your thoughts and opinions from it. Um, this week, semi-finals, as I said, uh, Pies v Dockers, Saturday, 10th of September, MCG. Game kicks off at 7.25pm. But before we get there, um, we have to discuss uh, Saturday's game. Summing it up in three letters, W-O-W. It was freaking amazing. You can't tell me that you don't play footy for games like that. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was an exciting game, I think. It sucks to be on the losing end, but I yeah. think if you wanted to see a four-quarter four quarter performance by us, you almost saw it there. So, you know, a few little things didn't go away, maybe some umpiring decisions, but I won't <laughs> yeah. get into that. Um, <laughs> not here to break the internet. Right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we've, you've seen we can mix it with the best because I, I genuinely do believe Geelong are the best team in the competition at the yeah. moment. So um, it was a good first round, disappointing result, but yeah. lucky to got got a chance to back it up. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the standard of the actual game as well, like the pressure from both sides, some of the goals that were kicked from Jeremy Cameron, um, from Ash Johnson, like the standard of football yeah. um, and the level of the pressure and the skills just rises to yeah. a whole new level and it's... That's why finals footy is the best because the best players come out to play and play their best footy. So um, I would have loved to be in a supporter in the stands watching it because yeah. um, being a part of it was amazing and yeah, bloody hell, it was um, pretty intense. Yeah, well said, mate. I'm going to go through some of those things with you now. Collingwood's pressure rating was through the roof. You laid 15 more tackles than the Cats and more tackles in the game than your average all season. Is this purely driven by Fly's direction for the style and brand of football that you're now playing? Um, I think definitely that has part uh, a part to do with deal with it, but um, to be honest, the way both teams were playing, yep. it was just such a high intensity pressure game. There's just a lot of opportunities for tackles, so it was congested. Uh, boys were tipping in, boys were smacking each other. So um, that's what finals footy's meant to be, and 
you know, they probably got the best of it, but I think we put up a pretty good fight. Bloody oath you did. I was sitting on the edge of the couch at home. I was going, no effing way. How intense is this? I bloody loved it. Uh, Fly has brought so much to the table this year. One of the most dis distinguishable things you notice from over the fence is mindset. Believe and achieve. It's comments like this. We're here to win this thing. You get to this point and you want to give it your best shot. Uh, we lost the game, but we're not losers. We want to act like winners. That's a bloody good mindset. How does that translate down through the playing group? Fly, fly in general, just throughout like day to day you know, on the weekend. What what he's brought to this club is something I've never seen in a coach before, and for him to have such an impact on a group so early on, and for us to come from 17th last year to fourth, it um it's a huge credit to the whole coaching panel with Graham Wright to be able to get those guys in, get the right people in, and for them to build the connection and relationship from coach to player, player to staff, because it's one whole club now. Like, yeah. it's not really separated at all like it used to be. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Fly is... He's very, very competitive. Yeah. Um, very competitive. And I feel like sometimes he can give you a bit of a spray, but it's, yeah, it's a bit of tough love. So yeah. for us to be coaching under him and for him to be able to... Um, coach us is, I think, yeah, it's truly amazing for the yeah. club and for the boys. Absolutely. Uh, not an answer required for this, but this type of ethos or mantra is what has given the Pies the drive for this season. Now, Saturday night, you're coming up against uh, your old assistant coach, and Justin Longmuir. Um, how much insight will he have into this playing group and the brand of footy you're currently playing? Yeah, J-Lo, he's very tactical. He's a very smart coach. Um, and he's probably one of the smartest coaches I've been under yeah. when he was the backline coach and the defensive defensive line coach when he came in in 2018. And that's why we went so far into um, into the season, deep into finals, is because he brought something else that none of our coaches really had, yeah. and which was a def uh, defence first sort of uh, mindset. And um, for him to get his gig at um, bloody hell at Frio, yeah. He, yeah, you can see that he's really tipping into what he knows and yeah they're playing for him they're all playing for each other they're playing a really good brand of footy but um, they do like to play a bit of a slow game style and we like a bit of a chaotic game style so uh, a bit like on the weekend against Geelong it should be a really good game. Yeah absolutely there are certain players in the Frio side that will require close attention if you take their ball carriers and influencers out of the equation and get the game on your terms it will go a long way to getting you the win. Players like Sarong, Brayshaw, Ryan and Mundy are prolific ball winners is this where you think the focus will be? Um, or will it be more that Frio will have to adjust to your style and brand of football? Um, good question. Um, Sorry. Yeah, no, they're, like you said, they're, they're great ball users. Yeah. Uh, they get a lot of it. So for us, it's probably just equalising in that. We know they're still going to get a lot of the ball because they're just, they're just ball getters. But um, if we can just limit um, you know, their kicks and their efficiency by putting pressure on, yeah. uh, we'll take that. So like... Braden was saying our game plan stacks up to what we're good at and I think that's why we play that way, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. we don't really worry too much about what they're going to bring as long as we bring our strength to the table. That good. should, you know, take Excellent. care of that. That's what I like. Um, there are confidence players, natural ability players, players that rise to the big occasions and those that thrive on the big stage and soak in the atmosphere. Which do you guys think you sit? Which of those defines you? Which do you reckon you'd be? The one that soaks up the atmosphere, the one that rises to the big occasion. Are you all of those? I like to think I am. Yeah. <laughs> so much Good. It's but, great um, if, if you do, because that's what, what I'd like you to say, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd like to think I am. It's, it's, um, it's pretty chaotic and mayhem finals football, and you kind of just go out there and do what you need to do for the team and play your role for the team. So mm. um, you, don't, you don't need to do anything special. You just simply play your role for the team and stick to the basics, because... Um, grand finals, you, you don't want anyone just going and doing their own thing. You need to stick no. to the game plan and um, trust the process. What about you, Jordan? Yeah, I'd like to think the same. Yeah. Um, it's it's great. good. I'll, yeah, yeah, it's good to have confidence, eh? Hey? Bloody hell. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just happy to you know be out there playing finals footy, to be honest, so yeah. just trying to grab every opportunity. Yeah, good. I'll, I'll go through some things uh, that uh, I took from the game. There are also uh, leaders at the club, people who lead by example. We have 
uh, the two fabulous leaders down at the club are also bleed black and white. I speak of Pendlebury and Darcy Moore. Both were brewing on Saturday. Darcy had 10 intercept marks down back and Pendle 7 with a game-high 34 disposals. And the ever-reliable Steelo also had 10 intercept marks along with 13 con contested possessions and five score involvements. More of the same from the consistent crew. And again, thanks for coming, Fremantle. That's what you'd be just... Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you very much Damo, well said. Um, I've spoken with hundreds of players over the journey and uh, only about 40% of the players that I've had, um, I've spoken to get to play in front of 90,000 people um, in blockbuster games. I know I asked it before and you did give me partially the answer but what, what is it like and are you used to it now? And I know you did say you are kind of used to it, but you've been playing now for long enough and each game that you do play, you play in front of massive crowds. For even you throw into the equation what you've been through in 2022 with the narrow wins that you've had. Just tell us, share it with the, the people here tonight. What's it like playing in front of that noise and that, that Collingwood cheer that comes and just overroars the whole MCG? Yeah, it is crazy. I... Um on the weekend, it, was, it wasn't as good as the 2018 prelim. Like, I have vivid memories of the 2018 prelim against Richmond when the Collingwood chant was being yelled out um, and it was actually being said over the uh, Richmond theme song and you couldn't hear their song. Wow. So it's actually it's crazy how loud it actually can get. And, and um, towards the end of the game, if it's a close game, which we've had plenty of close games this year, some of the centre bounces, um, when there's a little bit of a pause there in the game, that's when the crowd erupts. Yeah. And you do literally look around and go, holy crap, like, <laughs> this is real. Um, but in the game, you're obviously concentrating and locked into the game. But when you do get a second or a moment to look around, you yeah. do take notice of it. Wow. Wow. Um, a question that uh, – it's a question that's going to come to you, but I just wanted to go to a comment that you made. It was a post-match interview. Um, somebody had suggested to you, have you spoken to Geordie about what he's going to be doing? You said, mate, we're good mates. I don't get in his ear. I leave that stuff alone. We just talk football and we get on with it. So the question for you, uh, Geordie, are these the type of things that you take into consideration when making career decisions, big, um, big games, big club, um, mateship, all those big factors in, in the decision-making process? Yeah, of course. Um, it's definitely a factor. You know, everyone takes into consideration with Collingwood, but mm. at the same token, it's, you know, the team, the people we've got at the club, it's yeah. everything. And, you know, the place is in a really good position. We're building towards good results, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. we're already yeah. showing it now at, at early stages. So for me, like, like I've said pretty much every time, I'm really happy. It's just unfortunate my contract negotiations get yeah. a bit more public than others. Um, <laughs> But it's just the same as every other negotiation, guys, so don't stress. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, and one last thing. You love the black and white, don't you? Of course, mate. I do. I sure do. Just thought I'd throw that in for you guys, all right? Thanks, mate. Thanks for indulging me. Um, some people may not be aware, but you two have been mates for a while, even before playing together at Collingwood. You, along with Darcy Moore, all played together in the Under-18 Championships. Do you think this has helped you all develop more and quicker at AFL level? Definitely, definitely. We, I've actually, we touched on it before. I met, met Geordie, um, yeah, before AFL, and I actually met him at this party one night, and <laughs> I've walked in, my mate was DJing, a bit of a story, just hold up for a sec. Please, <laughs> please. So, my mate was DJing this party one night, and we've walked in to set up, and we're about an hour early, and I walk in, and I see Geordie on the couch with some bird hooking up with her. <laughs> I've gone, oh my God, who is this bloke? Anyway, I started setting up the DJ deck, introduced myself, and then we kicked it off from there. Oh. And here we are today. So, oh, seriously, um, this is what I get every that's time. That's how we met. <laughs> is there mayonnaise on that? Oh, mate. <laughs> it's actually funny. Braden wasn't even invited, but he had to use his mate who was DJing to get in. That's how bad it was. And then I was like, mate, get out. You're not invited. And then, you know, he's like, please, mate. And I was like, all right, stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good that we've had a really close relationship, especially with also Das. Um, yeah. I feel like 2014 was a really elite draft year for yeah. us. We, um, we drafted some, some talent and it, well, it's only me, Jordan, Das now. Um, yeah. <laughs> not really. That's enough talent. <laughs> so, um, no, I feel like it's, it's great to get drafted with blokes that you've played Vic Metro with. It makes it a sure. lot easier. So we for were sure. a lot comfortable, a lot more comfortable walking into the place. Yeah, especially if you look at like the statistics of AFL careers and everything like that. Uh, I like to play over 100 games. There's not many people that do it. Yeah. And then everything like that. And for us, we to all be in the same club yeah. um, still. 
um, <coughs> and playing over 100 games, it's yeah. it's pretty special. Pretty and it'll special. be one of those things, you know, we'll have a few beers when we get old and talk about how good we were, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> and how good looking we were, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it. Hey, speaking of Darcy, he was bloody brilliant the other night. To be honest, he's been pretty bloody awesome all year. He and Jeremy Howe, their defensive pressure and intercept marking ability has been at an elite level all year. Um, you play down back, you play on ball, you play up forward. How much do you notice of what they contribute to the, each game? I, I know that you love them and you know, adore them as footballers, but just give us a little bit of insight in your own words. Yeah, I think we're really lucky. Like, you know, you speak about those two guys and then you talk about Braz, put Braz in the same category as those guys and um, they've probably held us up for a bit of the year. Sometimes our results in, in the midfield haven't been good enough and, and we're lucky enough to have a really good back line that holds it down. So... Um, they're massive for us, they're obviously the start of our chain and if you look at all their stats and everything like that, they're pretty much number one in the AFL as a, as a defensive six. So um, hopefully they'll keep going. I know they're all great players, so hopefully no injuries and we, they keep doing what they're doing. Exactly right. We've had a really good core group for quite a while now, like we've obviously Darcy, Howie, myself, but also Isaac Quainor, Noble, um, and now we have Nick Dacos here. So... Um, yeah, Nathan Murphy, who's obviously came in this year, uh, who's been huge. He's probably one of the most courageous blokes I've played with. So we've got a really good backline group yes. that have played a lot of footy together and uh, we cherish every moment playing with each other because we do, we do get it done and you can obviously see that we, we're going deep in the finals, hopefully, with, yeah. with the group that we have. Bloody oath. Uh, you're obviously both gifted and talented footballers. What is your driving force, though? Um, like, what do you want to achieve from your football journey? Is it just being your best, receiving recognition through accolades or premierships? Oh, it's premierships, premierships. for sure. Um, I think everyone wants, you know, their name and premiership player yeah. in the same yeah. sentence. Yeah. Um, that's obviously the pinnacle of the game, pinnacle yeah. of the sport, and, yeah. and something, obviously, you know, you'll have memories for forever. So, Absolutely. Um, that's me personally. I'm pretty sure Braz will be much the same. Yeah, premierships for sure, but it's what are you doing to achieve achieve those goals and getting the premierships and Jordy and I are probably the next sort of group coming through and going to be the leaders of this group and hopefully lead us to multiple premierships but you've got to set high standards on and off the field and um, it starts with training and getting the boys to have really good relationships with each other so it doesn't premierships don't just happen yeah. they're bloody hard work and it starts sure. on the training track so making sure we like I said set high standards and train our butts off and yeah. then have a beer and have a laugh off field. We, um, yeah, you need to get the work life balance. Love it. Well Correct. said. I, uh, the reason I, I bring that up is because you're obviously both determined and hungry for success and you're pushing yourself to achieve the ultimate goal. What keeps you motivated and inspired? Because let's face it, the outside noise can just be a bit tad too much, even for some supporters. Um, what does keep you motivated? Is it just the driving force of being at the Collingwood Football Club? Is it the mateship? Is it. What is it? You tell me. Yeah, I think it's just what's within the four walls, like we speak about, keeping everything inside the four walls, you know. That's all we give or care about, um, I should say. And, you know, you've got good guys around, you've got good coaching staff, you've got people who believe in you and, and want to support you. So, for me, that's, that's been the biggest thing. You want to watch everyone succeed. You know, when yeah, you win right. a premiership, it's not just you. Yeah. It's the whole team, you know, the physios, the... The medicals, the volunteers, the fans, like yeah. it's everyone's on the Everyone, journey together yeah. and yeah. you want to succeed for them all. So it's more the broader picture yeah. that you really care about. Well said, well said. Yeah, well said, George. <laughs> um, I, we've touched on this multiple times, but I will touch on it again. Like the relationships that Fly is building with the playing group, the belief that we have in each other um, to train well, to do... PBs, like we have blokes doing PBs yeah. in the gym at the back end of their career, for example, still side bottom. Like everyone wants to be a winner every day and um, try their hardest. And yeah, as, as you see, our older, our older dudes are setting, setting the uh, benchmark and it's elite to see. And we uh, do have a really tight group that can do some seriously scary things. I love it, mate. Well, excellent. When you first got to the club, who took you under their wing and who have you taken under yours? Uh, Pendles was definitely great for me. Okay. I think uh, I think he's done that with a lot of younger guys, but yeah. he's kind of that bloke who's always there to support you, you know, ask yeah. questions, yeah. Uh, give you direction, feedback, everything like that. Um, but to be honest, I think we were lucky that we were together in our draft year because we can lean on each other yeah. and ask yeah. each other questions and stuff like that. So okay. it was good having an older guy, but then it's also good having people 
you know, similar age to you, yeah. wanting to succeed also and, cool. you know, living in a similar area and stuff like that, so. I hear you. We used to lean on each other quite a lot when we first got drafted, but to be completely honest, I was a bit of a lost cause when I first got drafted and um, like you do when you get drafted, you don't know what to expect, you don't know how high the standards are that you need to meet, um, you kind of just get drafted and you have your, you have your little core group of mates outside of footy and you think you're, you're top shit when you're around them and whatever it may look like. But um, when I got first drafted, I yeah, had no idea what to do. People thought I was a bit of a rat bag because I had a rat tail. and um, I probably was a little bit of a rat bag. Like my work-life balance was shocking. All I wanted to do was go out with mates and have fun. Um, and then I lent on a um, few of the older leadership uh, leaders like Pendles and that. I had a few chats with them and um, Pendles pretty much brought me into this uh, meeting one day and said, your mates are going one way and you're going the other way. And um, he said, you can, you can go down the path that your mates are going down or you can choose your own path. Um, wow. I feel like to this day I still haven't made that decision. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I definitely have made that decision, but um, I've learnt and matured a lot um, to, to know what's, what's um, capable of, of my football. That's brilliant. Excellent. I'd like to suggest that your tackling pressure across the board is something that has given real belief in your game, but also your standards. And I actually refer to you here. Braden, you laid a tackle on Mitch Duncan the other night, and I think I, you clipped his heel or something, um, and you got a cut above the eye. Now, I could be wrong here, but I swear it was bleeding black and white. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was? It was, it was yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I thought it was. Good. Um, your fierceness and toughness is what gives the whole group belief, not to mention what it does to the supporters. Let's go back to the Melbourne game, round 21. Those two monstrous tackles you laid, the first on Ed Langdon. That was, that was very, very team lifting. But the best was still to come. Wait, there's more, all right? Um, that hit on Alex Neil Bullen, um, not only was that a good one, but I love your reaction when you saw it on the replay post post interview. <laughs> I did hear that she was trying to uh, dig him out of the ground. That's why. <laughs> it was sensational. Um, what's one of the things you rate as your best skill or asset? I ask you both here. Your strength, your determination, your kicking style, your marking ability. What is it that you would suggest? What's your best asset that you like to think you have in your repertoire? Mine would definitely be the competitive side of the, the game. So definitely my tackling, um, my pressure, my pressure acts. I, f I feel like um, I'm an all right kick. I like to think that my kick's always been okay, but um, yeah, I love to compete and I love to lay big tackles. Yeah, great. Probably my field kick, I guess. I'm probably okay. a decent, yeah. decent kick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, really. Um, I like it, though, because it, it's something... That most people don't like to actually talk about themselves. I always yeah. get that. But there is certain things that you know you are good at, and I just think this is an opportunity to blow that trumpet and say, you know what, I'm a bloody good kick because I can hit a lace out. Braden you know? blows the trumpet enough, mate, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's great to be able to talk about it in an open forum and just say, you know what, I am a bloody good kick or I am an excellent tackler and, and I'm renowned for it. Um, I believe there are two things which make good clubs great clubs. The first thing is belief. The second thing is buy-in. Um, you might believe in something, but not until you take ownership of it does it actually become yours. This is what I have witnessed this year from the Pies. What are your thoughts on that theory? I think that's spot on. I think, uh, you know, new coach comes in, here's his game plan, here's his beliefs, this is what he wants you to follow. And, you know, you, have a, you always have two options. You want to follow it or you don't. Yeah. And I think, you know, you've seen from pretty much the whole team yeah. Um, everyone's on board, everyone's yeah. here for the journey yeah. Yeah. Um, and everyone's here to put the work in. So whether it's blokes playing VFL, um, AFL, on the border, everyone's loving it, yeah. everyone's enjoying it, yeah. so there's no reason why they shouldn't follow it. And it definitely Thanks. felt like towards the, or not towards the end, I should say, sort of halfway through um, the last year of Bucks' coaching year, blokes had definitely checked out, um, staff had checked out and... The club was a bit of a shambles, yeah. and as you said, that buy-in definitely wasn't there from everyone, and that's what you need from everyone to obviously be successful, and Fly has come along, and there's a complete buy-in from yeah. players, staff, everyone, and that's yeah. why we've been so successful this year, and I feel like it's only getting better. Wow. Well said, both of you. I like it. All right, let's go with it. Where do you think this game will be um, won and lost against Frio? What do you think? Um, 
Where do I think it's going to be won and lost? Yeah, where do you think it's going to be won and lost? Is it going to be um, their on ballers? Is it going to be your tackling pressure? Well, they're Is not going, going to win, be... so... Uh, <laughs> our, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if we keep the game... Because our game stacks up in in any sort of game. Like, we love a chaotic sort of mayhem game. We like love to keep the ball in live play, um, whereas they, like I said before, like to kick mark and play very slow, and I don't think that's what finals footy is about. Yeah. Um, so if we can keep the ball in live play and keep it out of their hands, I feel like we'll go a, uh, do well and go a long way. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I feel like we'll bring the heat and we'll win. Excellent. Uh, I'll give you the final word uh, to both of you. Your chip and margin, if you dare. No, 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 no. Collingwood? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know, yeah. Any, <laughs> anything above six points would be nice. We'll take that. Well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but there's very good confidence within the group that will do well. <laughs> All right, there you go. I like it. Lastly, I just wanted to draw attention to the All-Australian nominations for three Collingwood players, Josh Dacos, Jack Crisp and Braden Maynard. C congratulations, mate. Um, tell us what the emotion was like for you um, to, to reach that. Like what? Yeah, obviously very proud. Um, I've done a lot behind the scenes. I've learnt a lot. I've matured a lot. And I've had a lot of hard conversations along the way to get me um, to receive this, this accolade, but... Um, I want to win premierships. I mean, making all Australian teams and whatever it may look like is, is great, but you do play footy to win premierships. And um, as I've said, I feel like the group can do that. Um, but when I found out the news, Graham Wright called me and I was home alone and just chilling on the couch as I do, watching Netflix. And he gave me a call and he, he pretty much told me that I made the 22 and I kind of like... <laughs> did, a bit, did a bit of a fist pump. I would have loved to see a camera or footage of that because it was quite embarrassing. But I got up and I kind of just gave myself a bit of a smile and a bit That's of a fist brilliant. pump. So I was very, very happy. And he goes, you've got to keep it confidential. But I couldn't. I called mum and dad straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Riley. Um, but yeah, I had to tell someone. I couldn't just stand there or sit there and not say anything. So I called called mum and dad and they were actually uh, pretty teary. It was very, very nice. That's fantastic. Well deserved. Put your hands together for him. Well done, Braden. Thanks for sharing your, your stories with all of us uh, then. That was really wonderful. I uh, appreciate you being so candid. Uh, that was the end of that segment. I just want you to now put your hands together for both the boys. Thank you. In closing, I wish you both the ultimate success. I just hope you go out and absolutely smash him. I don't want to see anything under 12 goals. It would be bloody awesome um, for you guys to um, then move forward. You will be if that, was, if that is the case, and, and not to put any jinx on anything. Um, Sydney, the game was announced. It's going to be on Saturday night at the SCG next week. Um, so we hope to see Collingwood on the plane flying to Sydney next week uh, to take them on at the SCG and then back here at the MCG for the grand final. Woohoo! I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. I'm just, you know, telling it how it is. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. What I said. Um, so I'll introduce the segment. We'll get stuck in. It's called You Are Simply the Best. All right. Now, if you think you know the answer to the question, I'd like you to wait until you hear the entirety of the question before you buzz in. Um, and if you get the question right, then the boys will be flipping over the score paddle here. We want them to get a bit of a workout um, and we'll see how you both go. Are you both ready to go? Yep. Yeah. Excellent, all right. Speak loud and clear and concise into the microphone. Keep it under your chin and let's go. Your first question is, how many premierships has your club won? That's us. That's us. I'd, say it was, I'd say it was Brody. Oh, no. Right. You reckon it was Leash? All right, Leash. 15. There you go. She got the points. Well done. All right. That's why I need you to keep your microphone under your chin. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, good luck to both of you. How many times has your team played in a losing grand final? Leash. Sorry. Leash. 27. Correct. Well done. Have we got a bet on this, Jordy and I? We got coffee on or you want to play coffee? <laughs> Bit of a sideways? Put 100 bucks on it. Wow. Well done. Uh, here comes your third question. 200. Who is your team's captain? Brody. Brody. Scott Pendlebury. There you go. You're off the mark. Next question. Who wears the number seven Leash. at Brody? Leash. Josh Dacos. Josh Dacos is correct. Well done. <laughs> Closest to within a thousand, how many members is your Brody. club? Brody. Hang on, he doesn't even know the answer. No, he does. <laughs> well, he thinks he does. Leave, leave him alone, mate. You're right. Take your time. What is it, Brody? 100. 
100,000. You're just going to go with that? 100,000? Yeah, 100,000. Yeah, that'll do, mate, because it has to be within 1,000. Uh, 100,328. I did get 600. Anyway, it, you're, you are correct. Uh, where did your team... Now, listen to the entirety of the question. Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home Please. and away... OK. All right. 17th. Oh, she was good. She jumped in, she got it right. So the rest of the question was last year. All right, so well done, Alicia. Um, how many games did you win last year at the Brody. end of the home? Now, Brody. Six. Well done. Oh, what have we got? Three versus four. And you know how competitive these two boys are, so you better get it right, guys. Um, what year did your team last Brody. win? Brody. 2010. And who did they play? St Kilda. Well done. Some twice. Yep. Um, how many points did you win that grand final by? Brody. Brody. Brody? 52. No, you'd be mm -hmm. wrong. 56. 56 is it. Well done, Alicia. There you go. What are we sitting on now? Five versus four. All right. Uh, this is for two points. Who was the Collingwood player that won the Norma Smith medal Leash. in that grand final? Uh, Leash. Scott Prendenbury. Correct. Well done. That was actually for one point. This one's worth two points. I do apologise. Um, this one is worth two points. Not that it matters. It's OK. Relax. Uh, for two points, who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2021? Brody. Brody. Brody Majacek. Yes. And can you tell me for how many how many goals for the second point? Hey. Shh. How many? Take one off. He's got one point so far. Can you give me the amount? Um. Brody. 25. No. 34. 34. It is a point each. <laughs> I'm seven, you're four. No. <laughs> he was four. I'm five, yeah? It's getting controversial it's about, up here. It's about to be See a what I have to deal with every day. I have to deal with this idiot. Coming off the street? Bloody All hell. right. All right, so what have we got? Seven versus five. This is worth three points, okay? Three points. Wait for the entirety of the question because you'd hate to buzz in and get it wrong. Player, year, and votes. Brody. Oh. Dane Swan, 2010, 34 votes. Oh. You got two of that right. It was Dane Swan, it was 34 votes. What year? 2011. There it is. Yeah. Well done. Two points to Brody. No, 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 no. Two points to Brody, one to Alicia. What, what are we looking at? Eight. That's where he's been getting wrong, <laughs> that double pointer. Yeah. Eight versus seven. Now, you need to listen to the entirety of this question, whether you like it or not. I will give you three players' names. Give me the combined total of all three of their jumpers. All right? I'll give you three seconds after you buzz in to come in with the answer. Here are your three jumper numbers from the players' names. Josh Dacos, Nick Dacos, still side bottom. Leash. Leash. Three seconds. Quick. 63. Did you say? 66. <laughs> I think you said 63 on your first one. That would be incorrect. Did mm. you want to have a go, Brody? Oh. Yeah. Quick. Three seconds. Okay. How many? Yeah. 64. Yeah. He's correct. All right. There it is. Eight apiece. Eight apiece. This is the last question, guys. All right. So whoever gets this is going to be crowned our winner. I will give you three player jump, jumper numbers, they, and you have to add up all three jumper numbers in order to give me the total. Jack Crisp, 25. Jeremy Howe, Darcy Moore. Leash. Leash. 93. She got it. Wow. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> well done, Alicia. Well done. Thank you. Wow. How cool is that? Hey, Alicia, well done. That was fantastic. Well, Thank you. I think, uh, there you go, fist pump and all. Um, no, Leash, bad luck. Bad luck. you've uh, won $190 um, headphones, hey. noise cancelling headphones from Yamaha. Wow. They're all yours. Congratulations. Bro, you don't go home to the end. That's, that's good for footy football. Well done, champ. Good stuff. Well done. While he's doing that, I'll just tell you, Simply the Breast was proudly brought to you by Yamaha, the big picture people. They're the experts in surround sound home theatre technology. The big picture people are located in Hoppers Crossing, Clyde North, Watergarden, South Lorraine, Cheltenham and the Gold Coast. Well done, Leisha. Well done.
like that you two aren't that competitive either. That, <laughs> that was fantastic. All right. Now, what I want to do here, boys, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. They can be one-word answers, or you can go into it a little bit further. Totally up to you how you answer it. We're going to introduce a segment. It's called, What Can I Say? All right. So, um, here's your questions, boys. Do you like running through the banners? Yes. Good. Okay. The siren is gone. You need a goal. You need a goal to win the game. Who do you hope has got the ball in their hands to win the game? Jordan. Jamie. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Brayden. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, gonna go yeah, with those yeah, answers. Yeah, 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 good. Absolutely. All right, I like it. Collingwood supporters Love are and Nuts. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> yeah, second half. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Which AFL club do you like to beat the most? Carlton. 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 All right. I like it when you don't have to pause and you just come straight out with it. That's cool. Um, do you prefer a day or a twilight grand final? Day. Both? Okay, good. You've been reincarnated as an animal. What sort of an animal are you coming back as? <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. A dog, maybe? A dog? Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually want to be a bird. I would be a pig. I, no, I'd, I'd want to be a bird so I can shit on everyone and give them good luck. <laughs> so everyone gets good luck when I come around and shit on you. Wow. You know the answers run scripted, right? Wow. Well done. I like that. Hey, which one of these things gets you pumped the most before a game? Is it the smell of deep heat, fresh cut grass, pulling on a jumper, strapping on the boots, a footy in your hands, or the sound of the crowd? Uh, crowd. Crowd? Crowd. Crowd. Okay, good. Should Tasmania have a team of their own or a relocated one? No. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> nah, it's there too you go. cold. Yeah, waste of money. Yeah. <laughs> too cold and waste of money. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, who thinks they are the funniest bloke down at the club? Me. <laughs> Yeah, George. <laughs> <laughs> Who Be is the funniest bloke at the club? Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Uh, being an AFL footballer to you is? Being an AFL footballer to you is? The best. The best. Yeah, the best. Excellent. Excellent. Just trying to think. Yeah, yeah, the best. Yeah, good. Who's a bit tight with their money at the club? Braden. Oh, <laughs> please. This bloke next to me. Oh. <laughs> Braden, <laughs> biggest tight ass there is. Can we expand on this? Can you we can expand, expand on, on it if no, you want to. Braden used to get, it was like $150 a week. That's what he used to get. So whenever we'd go out for drinks or team things, yeah. he'd message his manager and say, you know, he needs to get some towels from Target yeah. or something <laughs> to get money to then come out. That is yeah. true. That's yeah, no yeah, yeah. word of all. Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost all his money through fines and all that oh. bullshit. So. <laughs> he has none. <laughs> Touche. Well Very Take good. That. Very good. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's why oh, he works wow. in the fish and chip shop, because he has no money. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, who likes to get their rig out just a little bit too much down at the club? Josh Dacos. Yeah, the Dacos brothers love their rig. Yeah, love right. It. Okay. Uh, you've been given the opportunity to do one of only the following things. Parachute out of a plane, take a hot lap in a V8 supercar, go hot air ballooning, or swim with the sharks. Which one are you choosing? Whoa. Well, I've jumped out of a plane before. I'd love to go in a V8 supercar. Oh, yeah. I feel lap? like the adrenaline would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, cool. I've actually done all of those things. Wow. Except I went in the shark tank and then didn't see any sharks, so. Yeah. So they, they actually got I'll scared of Geordie's head. Again. That's why they didn't How's come around. <laughs> they thought Geordie was the shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on fire. I love it. <laughs> wow. He's got too wow. much confidence. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite ground to play on around Australia and why? MCG. 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 Sure. Yeah. Beautiful. Too easy. Playing for the Collingwood Football Club is? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Everything. Yeah. yeah. I can't sum that up into one word. Yeah. A lot yeah. of superlatives. Oh, surreal. Yeah. Surreal. There's nice. There's a big word for you, Braden. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. What's the one thing you can't live without? Um, Jesus, I need to be careful what I say here. I, <laughs> I've got a partner, but I've got two dogs as well. So. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, dogs I'll, for I'll sure. Have, I'll have to say my partner and my dogs. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Fly by the seat of your pants, I like it. Yeah, dogs for yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, good. What's better, Mark or goal of the year? Oh. Mark. No, I reckon goal. Goal of the year. Wow. Yeah. No, I feel good. like goal of the year, people can do it. Like, you can practice it. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? We're mark of the year. It's like yeah, everything's got to be right. Yeah, yeah. right. I yeah. think Jeremy Howe would agree with you well, on that. Well, he's had enough of them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Share them around. Yeah. Hey, uh, when filling up with petrol, do you round it off to an even amount or do you keep going until it's full? <laughs> keep going until it's full. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah funny you ask this because back <laughs> in the day when I used to make $150 a week, <laughs> I, um, I used to round it up. Um, but now I feel it all the way. <laughs> oh, I like it. Nice. They say membership have, has its privileges. I'd say that's good. Um, who's the absolute worst dresser down at the club? The worst what, sorry? The worst dresser down at the club. Worst dresser. Oh. Uh, who's got Cal the worst? Cal Brown. Oh, really? Cal Brown, yeah. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's kind of finding what he wants, like finding yeah. his style. So. It's like he's having a midlife crisis yeah. when he's 14. <laughs> He, um, yeah, he wears some interesting kits, but yeah. I feel like everyone's actually got a pretty good style, so there's not okay. really anyone that has yeah, cool. a bad style. Um, oh, oh, I lo just love that answer. That's brilliant. Do you, like, uh, flashing, do, you, do you like the flashing lights and the music that goes on at Eddie Head Stadium after a goal? Just your opinion. Love it. Love it? Yes, but okay. I feel for the epileptic people that have uh, <laughs> epilepsy. <laughs> That's another story, I get it, yeah, I hear you. Um, you're, a, uh, you're a contestant on a reality TV show. What sort of a TV show is it? None. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love to be on Big Brother or something. Yeah. Big Brother or Love Island or, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> something, something like that. Contrasting styles, yeah, okay, all right. Uh, do you prefer to see the coach on the bench or in the box? Bench. He's, at, he's fine. He's good yeah. on the bench. Yeah, yeah. bench. Yeah, bench. good. Um, what, is, what has been the best win that you've, that you've been involved in so far? Definitely the 2018 prelim against Richmond. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. same. Yeah. Okay, excellent. All right. Who's the coach's pet? Uh, I Coxie. Coxie. Yeah. Oh. I don't reckon... Coxie, I don't reckon sure. there is a coach... Yeah, it's probably Coxie, but I don't reckon... There used to be quite a lot of coaches' pets... When Bucks is around, but I feel like, as we've touched on, Fly is very respectful to, towards everyone. Going, mate. It's yeah. a one-word answer. Sorry. You know? <laughs> Shut up. It doesn't have to be. Give the people what they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, so who is it? You, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. See what, see what I have to do with Wow. <laughs> Uh, if you were to appear on a talent show, would you be a singer or a dancer? Oh, oh, I'd manage to do both. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a singer. Singer? Singer. singer. Yeah. I'd uh, like to think so anyway. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Um, what do you think when you see a poster or merchandise of yourself? Um, <laughs> Holy shit, who's that rooster? <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to leave. I reckon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, what is your reaction when you see a kid with your number on their back? Holy shit, what a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I don't actually have many fans that have my number on their back, but uh, it is quite amazing. When I, nah, where? There's a few. Anyone I'll have to sign your jumper and get a photo with you after because I don't find it that often. I'll sign it again. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Yeah. There's, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Everywhere. Love it. Well done. Excellent. All right. Um, after a game, are you able to uh, relax or does it take you a while to unwind? No, I can relax. Get some okay. Maccas. Kick yep. back. Right. Yeah, I like to relax as well. Treat myself to a bit of a dirty feed. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Last question, boys. Should tomato sauce be kept in the fridge or the cupboard? Fridge. Oh, great question. Fridge, for sure. Uh, I always used to be a cupboard bloke, but now, um, ever since reading the back of the bottle, it actually says to keep it refrigerated <laughs> after opening, so um, I've been having off tomato sauce my whole life. <laughs> so, yeah, fridge. Very cool. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our segment. Put your hands together for the boys. Well done, guys. All right. Um, I just really want to say straight off the top, thank you to all you Collingwood fans for coming out tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful. They're clapping you. 
the one thing that I wanted to say is that we only put this show together on Monday and it was sold out by virtually Tuesday, although it was pretty well gone on Monday afternoon. So they all wanted to come and see you. So thank you both for being available. I am so sorry that I've made you go over time. Um, but I really appreciate the boys being here tonight. I just wanted to go through a couple of little things. Um, we love the Mulgrave Country Club for what they've given us tonight. I just wanted to also say thanks to Sam, my sound guy, and to the lovely Sandy, who does the door. Can't do the shows without them. If you want to know about what shows we're going to be doing, you've got to get on the like the That's Good Footy Facebook page. You can only purchase, purchase your tickets through the online uh, portal. So go onto that platform and that's where you can get your tickets. We have only think we've got two shows. It's going to be the 14th and the 21st. If there's a post-grand final show, you'll know about it, especially if it's Collingwood. Um, so you need to get online and make sure that you're following the page. That's the only place where you'll be able to get your tickets. It's pretty simple. Um, all I really, really want to say now is because I've kept the boys going, way longer than I anticipated, is could you please put your hands together for Braden Maynard and Jordan Degoey. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you for everything. I hope we can get you back on another show at some stage. Thank you, Braden. Thank you, Jordan. That's the boys. Say goodnight, everybody. Thank you very much. This has been the That's Good for Footy Panel Show. My name's Damien. Thank you and goodnight, everyone. Cheers, guys.